Hi, my name is Henry. I'm going to be showing you on how to deploy Jupyter Notebook Spark on AWS EKS. Please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel Dr. Warehub, where we're going to be bringing you videos on data engineering. The objective of this demo is to deep, is to demonstrate the deployment of uh, infrastructure for big data processing in AWS Cloud. We'll be using some technologies such as Docker, Spark, Kubernetes, and PostgreSQL. Uh, Docker is used for you know creating lightweight containers. They are portable. They are scalable. And uh, Spark is uh, supports uh, big data uh, data processing. They are fast, they support fast and large scale data processing. And uh, Kubernetes, which is an open source container orchestration tool. So, uh, con the Kubernetes is just like a pylon, it's going to like, you know, like, uh, you know, orchestrate all the manage the life cycle of our containers. Why Postgres uh, is a relational database? We are, you know, it's, it's, it's a database management system, we are, it's going to manage our database. So this is the architecture diagram, and you can see here we have our user. We have our user here, so our user can interact uh, with uh, AWS, and uh, also we have uh, some CLI tools. So with these CLI tools, uh, you can uh, uh, you have uh, the EKS CTL, the QCTL, the AWS CLI. And uh, you have EKS, by the way, EKS stands for Elastic Kubernetes Service. That is the, the Kubernetes service on AWS. So you can see from the architecture, you can see we have Jupyter Notebook uh, running on, uh, you know, they are running on, and we have two availability zones there. We have Spark, you know, uh, clusters. We have EC2 node groups, and uh, all of them are communicating uh, with uh, Postgres. Uh, we also use a uh, CloudWatch in order to capture Spark logs and container logs, which is very important. In case <coughs> you want to do any debugging, you can look at the log and see where the problem is coming from. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so the next one, I'm going to be showing you now the demo on how these things work. Uh, uh, we are going to, we are starting this demo by first, first we we write our Docker file. So our do Docker file is nothing but the specification of our, you know, Spark image. So that this image, we this uh, file, we we build this image using this file. That is our Spark image. So in this image, we have uh, the specification for Jupyter notebook and all the the most of the data science. Uh, packages we need you know to do write our code our PySpark code and uh, we build this image after building this image we now push it into a repo which is docker hub which is a public repo uh, from there we're going to use it later first of all we'll deploy our cluster into AWS but first of all uh, I want to tell you about uh, uh, the concept of uh, infrastructure as code. So, to deploy our infrastructure, we're going to specify them as manifest, as uh, configuration files in YAML, YAML files. Uh, so, it's just like uh, we have them as code, and when we run this code, this code is going to deploy our infrastructure. So, you can see here I have uh, lots of YAML files. So, uh, lots of configuration files to do. So, so but for now, let's deploy just by running this. We use ekctl2. Uh, we just use the command ekctl create cluster uh, dash f and the name of the YAML file, which is this. We run it. So it's running now, so it's going to take the time because that's so why I'm going to pause this video. I will come back when it's finished deploying. So we have deployed our our cluster. You can see it. Uh, this is my AWS now. I'm in AWS. You can see I have uh, this Amazon Elastic Kubernetes service. So this is the name of our 
cluster, our EKS cluster, that's Pack EKS. Uh, it's been deployed. You can see if I go to compute here, you can see the computer uh, EC2 you know instances deployed, and uh, and uh, after the deployment, now I did this. Uh, there's the one I did ahead of time. I created uh, I created uh, policy. Now I created the uh, the policy that will enable auto scaling. So and this is I will show you the. Uh, this is the JSON document. Sorry, guys. It yeah. Uh, so that's the that's the JSON file I used for creating the policy. So, with this is the name of my cluster here. So I use this to create the the policy. Then after creating this policy, and I create so after creating this policy, then I created the rule using this policy. So this rule will enable auto scaling. Uh, so then after that I had to now deploy the auto scaler now auto scaling will enable horizontal scaling that means if the workload increases it will scale up the number of EC2 instances and if it decreases it will scale down it's a way of saving cost you know so that you don't use uh, too much resources you use you, it will enable you use the right amount of uh, you know resources you need so this is uh, how so now we have our cluster up and running and everything looks good so we'll come back again and we'll continue so we now went ahead to deploy postgres uh, containers and uh, and spark containers so to deploy postgres we follow a few steps first of all we we run this uh, yaml file uh, this sorry not that one this First of all, we run this YAML file to provision storage. So because uh, we are dealing with database and we don't want, uh, in case if our containers die, we don't want to lose our data. So we have to uh, provision uh, our storage in, in our EC2 instances. Then we also uh, provision the run uh, this secret YAML to so that uh, we can encode our password and login credentials and also we did our deployment which actually deploys the port for postgres sql and also we now deploy the service so that uh, because it's a database we don't want any other person or any entity you know communicating with the database directly you have to go through a service that's a single point of entry to the database so it's for security reasons and ease of uh, accessibility too so and that's it so after that we now deploy our spark uh, in the cluster so for spark we first of all we deploy the service account so what the service account will do is that it's going to give our spark port the the rights or the permission it needs to be able to create other ports because uh, our our spark uh, is going to dri uh, dri uh, driver is going to create uh, executors so to give it the right to create executors and also uh, we now use this to uh, went ahead to de uh, run this to deploy the the spark cluster and also we now deploy the and a service for the spark which is called the headless service so this headless service will enable executors to communicate to the with the driver and so after uh, deploying spark and postgres so the next step now is to run Jupyter Notebook. So before we run Jupyter Notebook, we have to start Jupyter Notebook. You can see I've already started Jupyter Notebook just to save time. I I ran this code here. I will show you the code, that's the code here. I ran this code to start Jupyter Notebook. You can see the code there. Jupyter Notebook, that's the code I ran. So, but before you do that, you need to uh, kubectl exec into the pod. So, it's just a way of getting to the pod. You can see how I did the exec here. kubectl exec uh, dash it spark pod bash. You exec, it's just like you get uh, access into the pod. Then before you start uh, Jupyter notebook running in the pod. So, when you start, when you run this, it's going to give you a URL. So this is the URL, this pod, you can see the URL here, 
you can see it's a local host URL. It's, so it, it tells you that this Jupyter we started is running on port 8889. Then with the token, it gives you a token. So you just what you do is just copy this this thing that this is what you're going to run but before you do this because this is running in aws it's not running on your local machine now what you do you do port forwarding you have to port forward this port to your local machine so you just run this code this is the code i ran so you run this code but in this case now it will it will be 888 that means in this case it's going to be 8889 that's what you're going to run so what i did is that i port forwarded this uh as the port number so you port forward this so i did the, i ran this to port forward i think i opened another this is where i ran to do the port forward you can see where i ran it qctl port forward so so i'm the port on which uh, that is the port on which jupyter notebook is running in that port so you port forward once you do port forward then you go to your back browser you copy this url you copy this url here and go to your browser and i run it and you can see jupyter here so i've already uploaded this um notebook i already have so once you open that notebook that's the notebook it opens so uh so and the most the most important thing for me now is uh this configuration on this notebook so this notebook is connected to aws so you have to under here where you have spark session configurations under master so you make sure that this this url you have here make sure it's the same if you go to if you go to your cluster in aws is the same as the api service endpoint so that is it that is uh your another way you can you can get that you can do qctl if you do qctl cluster info you are able to get it i think i did something like that from here you can see i did qctl cluster info so you can just copy whichever way you can get it so you have it here so you replace it and you set all your configurations you know and also remember this place where you have spark for this configuration where we have spark driver host you it, this is the name of the headless service we you know we 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 we, we and this is the port of that uh, service and and you can see i'm able to connect to aws it's running this jupyter notebook so i'm um, see i'm able now to use this jupyter notebook to do my coding all my data science job you know or data engineering you know code and as you code you are submitting this job to aws and it's running fantastic you can see look at this that's url this url is coming from aws that's the service url for the database is coming from aws yeah very interesting so but i'm not good. don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also please do me a favor hit the like button